none of those things happened to me. But, you know, I, I can't speak to other people's experience. Mm-hmm. Well, Marilyn Manson's ex-wife, burlesque dancer Dita Von Teese, she recently did an interview that came out today. And in this interview, she talked about uh, Manson. The interviewer asked some questions about uh, their divorce and more specifically about the later Me Too allegations by Evan Rachel Wood and others that uh, came out against Manson. And so the interviewer asked uh, Dita Von Teese about how she responded to these allegations at the time. And then also how she feels about the situation since then. And so it's, that's, that part of the interview is really interesting. And I just want to say right off the bat that the most significant aspect of it, the, the key thing in this interview, is the fact that Dita Von Teis does clearly reaffirm that Marilyn Manson did not abuse her that he never abused her, and that she does not recognize the experiences that his accusers have had. And that is something that she has been consistent about since the Me Too allegations came out. When the Me Too allegations against Manson originally came out, when all of the, the women, including Evan Rachel Wood, posted that stuff on their Instagram and did interviews and all that, Dita released a statement, and you can see it here. And in this statement, she says that... Marilyn Manson did not abuse her. I want to read this statement. All right. A number of you are probably familiar with it. She says, I have been processing the news that broke Monday regarding Marilyn Manson. To those who have expressed your concerns of my well-being, I appreciate your kindness. Please know that the details made public do not match my personal experience during our seven years together as a couple. Had they, I would not have married him in December 2005. I left 12 months later due to infidelity and drug abuse. And then she continues on with the statement. Now, a number of you are familiar with this, right? But what's interesting about this this interview that she just did, I'm going to play some of it for you, is that she reaffirms that idea. Now, in some ways, she's very subtle in the interview. You can you get the very clear sense that she is not wanting to be seen as a big voice in defense of Manson. She's not wanting to draw attention to that particular part of the interview. And she really does sort of at times kind of dance around the topic or hint or imply without totally coming out and saying that, no, this didn't happen to me, and I can't relate to these women's experiences with Manson. But she does finally say it, and I think to her credit in this interview, because I think that she, I think this, from everything that I have heard and read about this woman, this is a, this is a woman of character. And I think that that really kicked in, especially at a certain point, and she did finally, she did finally say very clearly that she didn't have these experiences. I had been dating other famous men, but for some reason it was very interesting to people that I was with Marilyn Manson. Mm -hmm. And I was on the cover of Playboy. I was starring in a show with the Pussycat Dolls that had a lot of mainstream attention. And suddenly, like, Variety and the LA Times and all of these, like, entertainment media was singling me out as this girl in the giant martini glass is the best part of the show. Why did you decide to speak out if we're on the topic of mm. Marilyn Manson? Well, you know, I didn't really speak out, but the thing was at the time, I mean, I said, I had to say something, I guess, because, but, you know, I had all these feelings like, okay, we, we, we hear a lot about in Me Too, like the time frame and when somebody feels comfortable talking about something. And mm-hmm. I thought, I don't feel comfortable talking about this, but now I'm being held to the fire to talk about it because it, somebody else wants to talk about it. So I felt like that was something that came up for me. So I kind of tried to just make the statement that like my experience was, it was different. different. It was just different, but I don't want to, I'm not going to talk about it right now because I had a lot of people saying, oh, you must have had this happen to you and you didn't tell anyone. And I thought like my experience is different. Mm-hmm. I'll speak to it when I want. And also I thought I did speak to it at one point when I was newly divorced, when it was like a hot issue for me. And now it's, you know, it's 22 years later Later, since my my relationship and people change and I can't speak to anything that happened before me or after me. And also I thought today I was thinking this too, like, because I knew you, you wanted to ask me about that. I thought, well, you know, the way I would even speak about the experience in 2005 when I was getting a divorce you guys do come across each other sometimes? Oh, we, yeah, we, we, there was a point where I felt so much pressure to, like, 
forgive and forget that I did. And then this happens. And then it's like, don't, you know, you shouldn't be, you, you, you know, shouldn't be friendly. And so I just kind of, I got so exhausted by the whole thing. And then there's, everyone's got their own story and own perspective. And mm-hmm. I, all I have is mine. And I also have mine in various stages of life as well. Do you guys speak at all? I know. I don't really, I don't, I think I saw, I, I spoke with him in like 2020, mm-hmm. but I don't, I, I try to keep my distance. my distance, especially. I just feel like it's such a hot issue and so many people, and I don't want to, I don't want to get into it. I have, yep. I want to focus on moving forward and, and what you're and, working on. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe when I'm ready to talk or when it behooves me, you know, mm-hmm. when it makes sense for me, if I want to write about it in my book one day, I'll do that. But I just feel like I'm not trying to, you know, it's not, it's not what I'm, I'm not trying to, I don't, I don't feel any need to right now. Yeah. Did you get a lot of backlash for what you said? Did people like jump on it as if it was a statement or yeah? You, like, and I mean, I just thought like, seeming wow, supportive like, of him or whatever. I was, I was very like, this is, well, why don't you listen to the people who want to speak? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I'm, I don't want to speak, but my reasons for not wanting to speak are, you know, not what you think they are. Yeah. And it, it is again, like, we can't put pressure on other people to speak about things in in a time that isn't right for us. And it's just not the right time for me. I was not expecting it. Yeah. Of course, I did, like, kind of look at a lot of, like, try to understand what was happening. But again, like, I can't, you know, I think, I think Rose McGowan also said the same thing. It's like, I didn't, none of those things happened to me. But, you know... I can't speak to other people's experience. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it's just, it's really important to remind everybody that there are now multiple women who have in various ways, either, you know, directly and loudly or more subtly, have, who, who dated Marilyn Manson and some who had extensive relationships with him, have said that he didn't abuse them and they don't recognize this behavior that's alleged by Evan Rachel Wood and the others, right? And, you know, Dita Von Teese was married to him for uh, what was, you know, one or two years, but they, they dated, they were together for several years. And Rose McGowan is another one. Uh, I did a video several months ago in which I read a chapter from Rose McGowan's memoir, Brave, And in that memoir, she talks about all of the shitty men that she has dealt with over the course of her life. You know, all the the guys in Hollywood and Robert Rodriguez, um, a director whom she dated, and of course, Harvey Weinstein, because she was like the main one to take down Harvey Weinstein, right? And to to really be out there initially talking about it. So she, she has all of this shit to say about all of these different guys in her life, but who is the guy in that book, in Rose McGowan's book, Autobiography, who is the guy that comes out as a better man than I think anybody else in the book? And as she, and she talks about how kind he is, how sweet, how misunderstood, right? A great, great boyfriend. She has nothing bad to say about him, except when they broke up, when she broke up with him, he said some, you know, unchivalrous stuff on Howard Stern or whatever, right? Which I don't think, you know, come on, Howard Stern after a breakup. Anyway, so you got Rose McGowan, who was engaged to him for, what, a year or two and uh, dated him for several years. Same thing then with Dita Von Teese. And then remember that I've also interviewed on my channel, I've interviewed several women who had sexual romantic relationships with Manson. I think that all of this together is building a picture that this is not the man whom these accusers like Evan Rachel Wood and others are describing. And I told you also that I was contacted by a reporter for The Sun a year or so ago. I think this reporter was trying to get an interview with Lindsay Manson's wife, and I don't know why she thought that... I would be able to arrange that or want to arrange that or whatever, but I think that was basically what was going on. But uh, but she mentioned to me that she knew a woman who had dated Manson for a while, 
a, a, this was a friend of this reporter, and she said that she she was friends with this woman who had dated Manson for a while, and that this woman, this friend of hers, also said that Manson was sweet and that she didn't recognize these experiences that these women are describing, these accusers. So now we've got, and then that doesn't even account for the personal assistants that I've also interviewed on my show, uh, who basically, who lived with Manson. Well, they did live with Manson at certain points and who were around him extensively. And one of them, Paula, has been around him years and years and years and was around him in Evan, right? And she, you know what she said? She said that he's not abusive either and that Evan was the volatile one in that relationship. And so what I've got here, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that we've got all of these different women, okay, who have had experiences, uh, dating experiences with Manson or were even engaged, right, or even together with him for a longer period of time and, uh, or married, like Dita Von Teese, married to him. And they're all saying the same thing. They are all saying the same thing. And I just, I, I've said this before and I will continue to say it. I know that nothing is impossible and people can live very dichotomous lives, but I just do not think that it makes sense or seems likely or seems anywhere near probable. I think it's highly unlikely that you would have someone who, with a number of the women that he dates, he was a nice guy and a nice boyfriend and gentle and not not abusive. These div this diverse group of women, right, that he's dated or that he's been with long term, they are reporting this. I do not see how they can be reporting this. And then you have Evan Rachel Wood and Esme Bianco and some of these other accusers saying that he had this, this Jekyll and Hyde dark persona, that he was highly abusive. He tied them up. He cut them. He uh, raped them. He berated them. We have a completely different vision of the way that this man relates to women that he's in a re romantic relationship with. And you couple that then with the fact that, as I've talked about before in my videos, and just look it up, that the women in the accuser group all have all lied about things and are shady in various ways and disreputable and psychologically disturbed even in some of the cases. And I've poked holes in their stories and I pointed out how preposterous some of the things that they're saying are and the inconsistencies in what they've said over the years. I pointed out all this stuff so that automatically makes them less credible. And then you add to that the idea that it's a completely, it's a completely different story than what we're getting from these other women whom I do think are reputable. You know, I just, I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. I think, I think that he is not abusive. And so what I want, what I'm saying is that it would be really nice if the media would take a second look at this case, because I think that, I think that it's becoming pretty clear that this man is not the man that his accusers say he is. And you know, one of the things about this interview that Dita Von Teese did, I overall, I really liked the interview and I really appreciate what she had to say about Manson and that she finally did find it in herself to actually say the words, you know, he didn't abuse me like this. I didn't have these experiences these women had. But, but, but then she says also that she doesn't basically, to paraphrase, that she doesn't want to say more or she doesn't want to take a real stand for him because she doesn't feel like it's it's she doesn't feel like she should have to or she doesn't want, want to get involved and she she doesn't like it that people are asking her about it because she shouldn't have to talk about it and I just want to say that I understand that perspective I totally do and maybe it's the perspective that I would have in that situation as well but I do want to say and this is not a judgment on Dita Von Teese in particular, whatever. And again, I'm really glad that she did this interview and that she was courageous enough to say what she said. But I do think that when one, when one has pretty absolutely certain knowledge that the character of one's ex-husband, even if that ex-husband did, did break your heart or cheat on you, but that that person, you know that their character is not that of an abuser, and that, that is, this is someone who does treat women gently. When one has that absolute knowledge, like Dita does, okay, 
I, and I say absolute because she has absolute knowledge of what she experienced, at least, right? I do think that there is a kind of a moral imperative, an ethical imperative on that person to take a stand and to not shy away from putting their truth out there. And I know that she did do that originally in that statement that she made, and she got a lot of flack for it. But, um, but I do think, I do, gosh, I just wish, there, there, just, there are women out there who know that Marilyn Manson did not do this and is not like this. And they could be making a bigger impact if they would, if they would talk about it. And they may say, like Dita may say, well, it's not, you know, it's not my place. Actually, whose place is it? to stand up for an innocent man, if not one of the few people who could, who could testify, testify with credibility or could speak with credibility to this man's character and romantic relationship. Who else then? And Dina Von Teese and, and, and Rose McGowan and a number of other women, they know, they know that this is not who this man is. And I'm glad some of them have spoken out, but I do think that it would be, it would be, it would be ethically, how should we say, ethically righteous to, to, to speak up and to speak up with a louder voice or in a more prominent way, especially because this thing is about to, in this next year, go to trial. Manson is suing these women for Ver uh, Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore, her co-conspirator. I do think that some good times are, are coming with this. Well, good times. But I do think that some positive times or positive developments are coming in this case. And again, George Gascon, the Los Angeles district attorney, he is still, his office is still following me on Twitter. And I just want to say something about that real quick. Okay. When I posted a couple of weeks ago that he was following me and I was really taking some satisfaction in that and thinking that that was a good sign perhaps of something, I had a number of people, um, and not in a bad way, but a number of people said, uh, hold on, come on, like, it could just be an accident. So there's several theories, right? Uh, one theory is that it could just be an accident, right? Like some, some aid of his or some intern just hit the wrong thing. Another theory is that he could be watching me, his office could be watching me, uh, in order to keep an eye on me, but maybe in a negative sense. Like, I'm out here you know, attacking supposed victims and putting these supposed conspiracy theories out there or whatever, and they want to show me that they're keeping an eye on me. That's one idea. And then another idea is that uh, in a positive sense, they want to keep an eye on me, but it's not really a big deal. It doesn't, you know, okay, so she's alleging these things and she's done this research and we're looking into the case, so we'll sort of throw her a bone and, and throw everybody, you know, who's interested in this kind of a bone and say, okay, all right, we're, we're keeping an eye on your perspective. We're giving it its day. Here's why I don't think that it is any of those three and that, in fact, and I don't want to count chickens before they hatch or get people, you know, overly positive, but I think that it is more likely that following me is meant to send some kind of a message. And I think some kind of a message in anticipation of their not pursuing charges against Manson and their announcing this coming year that he has been cleared by them. And then, you know, there is this part of me, I have to say, it's, it's the dreamer in me, but there is this part of me that wonders if the DA would actually go after Evan Rachel Wood and Ilma Gore for this hoax in some way, like they went after uh, Jesse Smollett. And I've talked about that before. You know, one can hope, right? But here's why I think that they're following me, that that office following me is sending some kind of a message, okay? Because the LADA is, no offense to him, but he's extremely conscious of his political image, as are politicians in general, but, but he's extremely conscious of that. I think that it is highly unlikely that he would follow someone like me, given my reputation for questioning accusers it's not politically correct and we know that i get i get rough you know on this show at times right very pointed even insulting i don't see how he would be following me 
if if they're if he weren't trying to send some kind of a message about the Marilyn Manson case because it just doesn't make politi good political sense. I looked at all of the other people that he follows, and none of them are like me. All of the 595 people or whatever that he follows, they're all politicians, government officials, or nonprofit organizations, or in some cases, major news correspondents. Nobody like me, not some like kind of offbeat blogger with controversial opinions and you know, pseudo or quote unquote conspiracy theories or whatever. So it has to be, it, I, I not has to, but I do think that if his office is following me on purpose, all right, that it is sending some kind of a message in some way, or it's because maybe at some future point, I will be a resource to people who want to know why they didn't file charges or why they arrested Evan Rachel Wood. I don't know. And I know that, you know, it could be a mistake as well, but here's the thing. If it was just something that an intern accidentally clicked on, it's not like his office follows just a ton of people, right? I mean, they've got thousands and thousands of followers and they only follow 595. And as I said, I looked at them all. It's a very select group. Um, but I think if an intern made some kind of a mistake and they clicked on me accidentally, as much as I have been obnoxiously touting this follow, and yes, I'm aware when I'm obnoxious about things, right? But I, you know. I'm playing some chess here and I've got, sometimes I'm loud and aggressive or I'm even loud and tacky or obnoxious, okay, or even embarrassing sometimes because I, I'm actually trying to do something. And I have been obnoxiously touting the fact that he's following me and talking about it as significant and even like kind of gloating over it, right? And I know he has to be, I know his office has to be aware of that now. If it, if it were a mistake, it would have been corrected by now. Okay, as, as much as like I've been posting about it and tagging and other people have been posting about it and whatever, it would have been corrected. So it is intentional, I think. And look, the fact is a lot of people view following someone online in, on social media as a kind of endorsement. Now, I'm not saying that's what it is and I'm not saying that's how I view it, but we know that there are a significant number of people who, who view a social media follow as an endorsement. And I know that because people always make such a big deal of people getting unfollowed, right? Like, oh, look, this many celebrities unfollowed Johnny Depp. Are they sending a message? Or this celebrity unfollowed this person after she talked shit about some, his girlfriend or whatever, right? And, and, and the, so, so there is that perception out there that a follow means something. And, and that's why I get questions sometimes, people asking me, why do you follow this despicable person? It's not that I admire them. I'm just wanting to you know, keep tabs on them. But I, what I'm saying is that I think as politically conscious as George Gascon is and as his office is, and knowing that a follow on social media does to at least a significant number of people signify some kind of endorsement, I just don't see how it's it's un unintentional or how it's negative for Manson's case. And I don't want to get my hopes up and I'm here, you know, I'm going to be here working hard and trying to get the word out and I'm not counting any chickens, God knows, before they hatch. But I do think it's interesting. Anyway, thank you so much for your support. Uh, my links are below. As always, like and subscribe. Your tips and donations really are helpful. As I've talked about before, I am in this kind of uh, sort of weird no man's land or purgatory between having a hobby and having a full-time job. And so uh, in, in that way, your donations actually matter even more than if I were just barreling ahead with this huge YouTube channel, right? But I am working on it. Hopefully get there one day. All my links are below. Thank you so much. And yes, Marilyn Manson is innocent. And those who stand up for that now will look very smart in the future, especially now that people are getting sick of the excesses of Me Too and cancel culture. All right. Bye, everybody.